everyone, Sebastian here from Green Music Productions, and I am back with another really interesting plugin called Smooth Operator by Baby Audio. You guys know I like these hidden gems that are not expensive, but that are really intelligent in what they do while being simple to use. This is one of those. And before we start, make sure to click the like button if you like that kind of content and subscribe if you're not a subscriber. And let's hear about today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. With thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, video, freelancing, and obviously music. Whether it's music theory, learning an instrument, music production, even the music business, there's a ton of content on there. There's even specific things like how to make beats, how to design great synth sounds, or even Cubase specific videos. To give you an example, I've been following this class by Will Edwards called Wavetable Sound Design Strategy, and it's really insightful. It gives you a lot of tools to create better synth sounds. Now most classes are under 60 minutes with short lesson to fit any schedule. So I'll leave a link in the description below. The first thousand people to use the link will get a free one month trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Make sure to check it out and keep learning. So as you can see, the layout is really simple. It kind of looks like a parametric EQ. You have some dots over here and you seem to have some frequencies. So uh, yeah, it really looks like an EQ. The only difference is this is super intelligent. It combines equalization, spectral compression and resonance suppression into a really single intuitive workflow. So the way it works is you just lower the dots to apply more of the effect and you have a focus slider right here. So lower the focus, the broader the process will be. And if you put it to 100, it will be super precise in the process. So let's dive into it and try to do something with this bass sound. So first let's bypass the smooth operator on the bass and listen to it. So I like that bass tone, but maybe we would like to reduce the mid and make it a bit rounder while keeping the high frequency. So let's try to do that with Smooth Operator. So there seemed to be a buzz in the mid-range, so let's enable the solo so I can just hear the specific bend that I'm working on and try to pinpoint the buzz. Seems to be over here. And let's try to reduce the pick sound as well. So if I bypass it now. Just like that, I completely changed the tone of the bass and it's not like I just applied an EQ, uh, it really reacts intelligently to the incoming sound. So that's really cool what it can do. Uh, I also messed around with some keys that I found quite harsh. So let's listen to it uh, and see what it does. So let's hear without. So as you can see in the high mids, there's a lot of harshness there. So I just messed around a little bit and did that curve and let's listen to what it, it does. Now without. Okay. 
beautiful. It makes it round, but at the same time, it's not static like an EQ, so it reacts according to uh, the frequencies that are coming in. So I really like that. It was super easy and fast. So it also has a sidechain option right here. So you just have to enable the sidechain in Cubase. It's quite easy. You just enable the sidechain over here and you select uh, the source. So in this case, I'll apply it to the base and the kick will be triggering the smooth operator on the base to make it process the base while the kick is coming in. So let's listen to it. So let's just solo uh, the bass and the drums and see how it sounds like. So as you can see, it only kicks in when the kick drum is coming in, so that's good. I didn't even touch the curve here since it's supposed to adapt to the incoming signal. So let's try to lower it even more. It works really well. Uh, the only thing is, I don't think we can change the attack and the release. So in this case, the release is quite slow, which means that the bass takes a while to go back up to its original volume and the kick is super, super quick and super tight. So that's something that I would like to see. Um, but overall, it works really well. I'm a big fan of Track Spacer. Let's just try to compare it to Track Spacer and see how it, how it compares. So I have Track Spacer right here. I already have the sidechain set up. So the beautiful thing about Track Spacer is you have the attack and release knob, so it really helps. I put the attack and release to be super fast, but the original settings were somewhere over here and they sounded just like a smooth operator. As you can see, with lower release, it, it sounds just like smooth operator. So it does a good job uh, at side chaining. The only thing is the release is a bit slow. So maybe in the future, uh, having an attack and a release would be amazing. But overall, I really like that plugin. It's super nice uh, what it does and it's easy to use. These are my favorites. Now, as you could see, the uh, middle dot right here uh, is just to raise and lower the overall curve. So apply more of the effect if you want. Uh, and I sometime would like to have another band right here that I can tweak. So I would like to have this as a usable band instead and maybe have a, something over here to lower or raise the overall curve instead. Uh, but that's just a small complaint that I have. It's really easy to use and simple. It's super cheap. Usually I think it's $69 and at the time of recording of this video, it's 39 bucks. So I leave a link in the description. Make sure to check it out. It's really, really cool. Uh, as usual, click the like button and subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.